Dramatis Personae of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae Cymbeline, King of Britain, read by Tony Addison. Clotten, son to the Queen by a former husband, read by Tony Addison. Posthumus Leonatus, a gentleman, husband to Imogen, read by Thomas Peter. Valerius, a banished lord, disguised under the name of Morgan, read by Craig Franklin. Guiderius, son to Cymbeline, disguised under the name of Polydor, supposed son to Morgan, read by Thomas Peter. Arviragus, son to Cymbeline disguised under the name of Cadwall, supposed son to Morgan, read by Tony Addison. Filario, friend to Posthumus, Italian, read by Craig Franklin. Iacimo, friend to Filario, Italian, read by Tony Addison. Caius Lucius, general of the Roman forces, read by Thomas Peter. Pisanio, servant to posthumus read by craig franklin cornelius a physician read by thomas peter a roman captain read by tony addison first british captain read by craig franklin second british captain read by sonia a frenchman friend to filario read by sonia first lord of Cymbeline's court, read by Thomas Peter. Second Lord of Cymbeline's court, read by Craig Franklin. First Gentleman of Cymbeline's court, read by Craig Franklin. Second Gentleman of Cymbeline's court, read by Thomas Peter. First Jailer, read by Sonia. Second Jailer, read by Craig Franklin. Queen, wife to Cymbeline, read by Sonia. Imogen, daughter to Cymbeline by a former queen, read by Sonia. Lady Helen, a lady attending on Imogen, read by Thomas Peter. British Lord, read by Tony Addison. First Lady, read by Tony Addison. First Roman Senator, read by Thomas Peter. Second Roman Senator, read by Tony Addison. First Tribune, read by Craig Franklin. A Soothsayer, read by Sonia. Musicians, read by Sonia. Messenger, read by Craig Franklin. Attendant, read by Thomas Peter. Cecilius, an apparition, read by Craig Franklin. Mother, an apparition read by tony addison first brother an apparition read by thomas peter second brother an apparition read by tony addison jupiter an apparition read by sonia narrator read by sonia scene britain rome End of Dramatis Personae Act I of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act I. Scene I. Britain. The Garden of Cymbeline's Palace enter two gentlemen you do not meet a man but frowns our bloods no more obey the heavens than our courtiers still seem as does the king but what's the matter his daughters and the heir of's kingdom whom he purposed to his wife's sole son a widow that late he married hath referred herself unto a poor but worthy gentleman she's wedded 
her husband banished she imprisoned all his outward sorrow though i think the king be touched at very heart none but the king he that hath lost her too so is the queen that most desired the match but not a courtier although they wear their faces to the bent of the king's looks hath a heart that is not glad at the thing they scowl at and why so he that hath missed the princess is a thing too bad for bad report and he that hath her i mean that married her alack good man and therefore banished is a creature such as to seek through the regions of the earth for one his like there would be something failing in him that should compare i do not think so fair and outward and such stuff within endows a man but he you speak him far i do extend him sir within himself crush him together rather than unfold his measure duly what's his name and birth i cannot delve him to the root his father was called cecilius who did join his honour against the romans with cassibellan but had his titles by tenantius whom he served with glory and admired success so gained the sir addition leonatus and had besides this gentleman in question two other sons who in the wars of the time died with their swords in hand for which their father then old and fond of issue took such sorrow that he quit being and his gentle lady big of this gentleman our theme deceased as he was born the king he takes the babe to his protection calls him posthumous leonatus breeds him and makes him of his bedchamber puts to him all the learnings that his time could make him the receiver of which he took as we do e'er fast as twas ministered and in spring became a harvest lived in court which rare it is to do most praised most loved a sample to the youngest to the more mature a glass that feated them and to the graver a child that guided dotards to his mistress for whom he now is banished her own price proclaims how she esteemed him and his virtue by her election may be truly read what kind of man he is i honour him even out of your report but pray you tell me is she sole child to the king his only child he had two sons if this be worth your hearing mark it the eldest of them at three years old in the swathing clothes the other from their nursery was stolen and to this hour no guess in knowledge which way they went how long is this ago some twenty years that a king's children should be so conveyed so slackly guarded and the search so slow that could not trace them howsoe'er tis strange or that the negligence may well be laughed at yet it is true sir i do well believe you we must forbear here comes the gentleman the queen and princess exeunt enter the queen posthumus and imogen no to be assured you shall not find me daughter after the slender of most stepmothers evil eyed unto you you're my prisoner but your jailer shall deliver you the keys that lock up your restraint for you posthumus so soon as i can win the offended king i will be known your advocate marry yet the fire of rage is in him and were good you leaned unto his sentence with what patience your wisdom may inform you please your highness i will from hence to-day you know the peril i'll fetch a turn about the garden pitying the pangs of bard affections though the king hath charged you should not speak together exit o oh, dissembling courtesy how fine this tyrant can tickle where she wounds my dearest husband 
i something fear my father's wrath but nothing always reserved my holy duty what his rage can do on me you must be gone and i shall here abide the hourly shot of angry eyes not comforted to live but that there is this jewel in the world that i may see again my queen my mistress o oh, lady weep no more lest i give cause to be suspected of more tenderness than doth become a man i will remain the loyalest husband that did e'er plight troth my residence in rome at one filario's who to my father was a friend to me known but by letter to the right my queen and with my eyes i'll drink the words you send though ink be made of gall re-enter queen be brief i pray you if the king come i shall incur i know not how much of his displeasure aside yet i'll move him to walk this way i never do him wrong but he does by my injuries to be friends pays dear for my offences exit should we be taking leave as long a term as yet we have to live the loathness to depart would grow adieu nay stay a little were you but riding forth to air yourself such parting were too petty look here love this diamond was my mother's take it heart but keep it till you woo another wife when imogen is dead how how another you gentle gods give me but this i have and sear up my embracements from her next with bonds of death putting on the ring remain remain thou here while sense can keep it on and sweetest fairest as i my poor self did exchange for you to your so infinite loss so in our trifles i still win of you for my sake wear this it is a manacle of love i'll place it upon this fairest prisoner putting a bracelet upon her arm oh the gods when shall we see again enter cymbeline and lords alack the king thou basest thing avoid hence from my sight if after this command thou brought the court with thy unworthiness thou diest away thou art poison to my blood the gods protect you and bless the good remainders of the court i am gone exit there cannot be a pinch in death more sharp than this is <laughs> oh disloyal thing that shouldst repair my youth thou heaps a year's age on me i beseech you sir harm not yourself with your vexation i am senseless of your wrath a touch more rare subdues all pangs all fears past grace obedient past hope and in despair that way past grace but might have had the sole son of my queen how oh, blessed that i might not i chose an eagle and did avoid a puttock thou took'st a beggar what's have made my throne a seat for baseness no i rather added a lustre to it oh thou vile one sir it is your fault that i have loved posthumus you bred him as my playfellow and he is a man worth any woman overbuys me almost the sum he pays what art the man almost sir heaven restore me would i were a neat herd's daughter and my leonatus our neighbour shepherd's son thou foolish thing re-enter queen they were again together you have not done after our command away with her and pen her up beseech your patience 
peace dear lady daughter peace sweet sovereign leave us to ourselves and make yourself some comfort out of your best advice nay let her languish a drop of blood a day and being aged die of this folly exeunt cymbeline and lords fie you must give way enter pisanio here is your servant how now sir what news my lord your son drew on my master huh. no harm i trust is done there might have been but that my master rather played than fought and had no help of anger they were parted by gentlemen at hand i am very glad on it your son's my father's friend he takes his part <laughs> to draw upon an exile oh brave sir i would they were in afric both together myself by with a needle that i might prick the goer back why came you from your master on his command he would not suffer me to bring him to the haven left these notes of what commands i should be subject to went pleased you to employ me this hath been your faithful servant i dare lay mine honour he will remain so i humbly thank your highness pray walk a while about some half hour hence i pray you speak with me you shall at least go see my lord aboard for this time leave me exeunt scene two the same a public place enter clotten and two lords sir i would advise to shift a shirt the violence of action hath made you weak as a sacrifice where air comes out air comes in mm. It is none abroad so wholesome as that you vent. If my shirt were bloody, <coughs> then to shift it, <laughs> and I hurt him. No, Faith, not so much as his patience. Hurt him? His body is a passable carcass if he be not hurt. It is a through fare for steel if it be not hurt. His steel was in debt. It went o'er the backside the town. The villain would not stand me. No, but he fled forward still towards your face. Stand you? You have learned enough of your own. But he added to your having, gave you some ground as many inches as ye have oceans puppies oh would they had not come between us so would i till you had measured how long a fool you were upon the ground and that she should love this fella and refuse me if it be a sin to make a true election she is damned sir as i told you always her beauty and her brain go not together she is a good sign but i have seen small reflection of her wit she shines not upon fools lest the reflection should hurt her come out to my chamber would there have been some done i wish not so unless it had been the fall of an ass which is no great hurt you go with us oh i'll attend your lordship nay come let's go together well my lord exeunt scene three a room in cymbeline's palace enter imogen and pisanio i would thou grewest unto the shores of the haven and questionst every sail if he should write and i not have it twere paper lost as offered mercy is what was the last that he spake to thee 
it was his queen his queen then waved his handkerchief and kissed it madam oh senseless linen happier therein than i and that was all no madam for so long as he could make me with this eye or ear distinguish him from others he did keep the deck with glove or hat or handkerchief still waving as the fits and stirs of his mind could best express how slow his soul sailed on how swift his ship thou shouldst have made him as little as a crow or less ere left to after eye him madam so i did i would have broke mine eye-strings cracked them but to look upon him till the diminution of space had pointed him sharp as my needle nay followed him till he had melted from the smallness of a net to air and then have turned mine eye and wept but good pisanio when shall we hear from him be assured madam with his next vantage i did not take my leave of him but had most pretty things to say ere i could tell him how i would think on him at certain hours such thoughts and such or i could make him swear the sheaves of italy should not betray mine interest and his honour or have charged him at the sixth hour of morn at noon at midnight to encounter me with orisons for then i am in heaven for him or ere i could give him that parting kiss which i had said betwixt two charming words comes in my father and like the tyrannous breathing of the north shakes all our buds from growing enter a lady the queen madam desires your highness company those things i bid you do get them dispatched i will attend the queen madam i shall exeunt scene four rome philario's house Enter Filario, Iacimo, a Frenchman, a Dutchman, and a Spaniard. Believe it, sir, I have seen him in Britain. He was then of a crescent note, expected to prove so worthy, as since he hath been allowed the name of. But I could then have looked on him without the help of admiration, though the catalogue of his endowments had been tabled by his side, and i to peruse him by items you speak of him when he was less furnished than now he is with that which makes him both without and within i have seen him in france we had very many there could behold the sun with as firm eyes as he this matter of marrying his king's daughter wherein he must be weighed rather by her value than his own words him i doubt not a great deal from the matter and then his banishment ay and the approbation of those that weep this lamentable divorce under her colours are wonderfully to extend him be it but to fortify her judgment which else an easy battery might they flat for taking a beggar without less quality but how comes it he is to sojourn with you how creeps acquaintance his father and i were soldiers together to whom i have been often bound for no less than my life here comes the briton let him be so entertained amongst you as suits with gentlemen of your knowing to a stranger of his quality enter posthumus i beseech you all be better known to this gentleman whom i commend to you as a noble friend of mine how worthy he is i will leave to appear hereafter rather than story him in his own hearing sire we have known together in orleans since when i have been debtor to you for courtesies which i will be ever to pay and yet pay still sire you overrate my poor kindness i was glad i did atone my countrymen and you it had been pity you should have been put together with so mortal a purpose as then each bore upon importance of so slight and trivial a nature by your pardon sir i was then a young traveller 
rather shun to go even with what I heard than in my every action to be guided by others' experiences. But upon my mended judgment, if I offend not to say it is mended, my quarrel was not altogether slight. Faith, yes, to be put to the arbitral mend of swords, and by such too that would by all likelihood have confounded one the other, or have fallen both. Can we, with manners, ask what was the difference? Safely, I think. T'was a contention in public, which may, without contradiction, suffer the report. It was much like an argument that fell out last night, where each of us fell in praise of our country mistresses. This gentleman, at that time vouching and upon warrant of bloody affirmation his to be more fair virtuous wise chaste constant qualified and less attemptable than any the rarest of our ladies in france that lady is not now living or this gentleman's opinion by this worn out she holds her virtue still and i my mind you must not so far prefer her for ours of Italy. Being so far provoked as I was in France, I would debate her nothing, though I profess myself her adorer, not her friend. As fair and as good, a kind of hand-in-hand -hand comparison, had been something too fair and too good for any lady in Britain if she went before others i have seen as that diamond of yours outlusters many i have beheld i could not but believe she excelled many but i have not seen the most precious diamond that is nor you the lady i praised her as i rated her so do i my stone what do you esteem it at more than the world enjoys either your unparagoned mistress is dead, or she's outprized by a trifle. You are mistaken. The one may be sold, or given, if there were wealth enough for the purchase, or merit for the gift. The other is not a thing for sale, and only the gift of the gods. Which the gods have given you. Which, by their graces, I will keep you may wear her in title yours but you know strange foul light upon neighbouring ponds your ring may be stolen too so your brace of unprizable estimations the one is but frail and the other casual a cunning thief or a that way accomplished courtier would hazard the winning both the first and last your italy contains none so accomplished a courtier to convince the honour of my mistress if in the holding or loss of that you term her frail i do nothing doubt you have store of thieves notwithstanding i fear not my ring let us leave here gentlemen sir with all my heart this worthy signor i thank him makes no stranger of me we are familiar at first with five times so much conversation i could get ground of your fair mistress make her go back even to the yielding had i admittance and opportunity to friend no no i dare bear upon pawn the moiety of my estate to your ring which in my opinion overvalues it something but i make my wager rather against your confidence than her reputation and to buy your offence herein too i durst attempt it against any lady in the world you are a great deal abused in too bold a persuasion and i doubt not you sustain what you are worthy of by your attempt what's that a repulse though your attempt as you call it deserve more a punishment too gentlemen enough of this it came in too suddenly let it die as it was born and i pray you 
be better acquainted would i had put my estate and my neighbours on the approbation of what i have spoke what lady would you choose to assail yours whom in constancy you think stands so safe i will lay you ten thousand ducats to your ring that commend me to the court where your lady is with no more advantage than the opportunity of a second conference and i will bring from thence that honour of hers which you imagine so reserved i will wage against your gold gold to it my ring i hold dear as my finger tis part of it you are afraid and therein the wiser if you buy ladies flesh at a million a dram you cannot preserve it from tainting but i see you have some religion in you that you fear this is but a custom in your tongue you bear a graver purpose i hope i am the master of my speeches and would undergo what's spoken i swear will you i shall but lend my diamond till your return let there be covenants drawn betweens my mistress exceeds in goodness the hugeness of your unworthy thinking i dare you to this match here's my ring i will have it no lay by the gods it is one if i bring you no sufficient testimony my ten thousand ducats are yours so is your diamond too if i come off and leave her in such honour as you have trust in she your duel this your duel and my gold are yours provided i have your commendation for my more free entertainment i embrace these conditions let us have articles betwixt us only thus far you shall answer if you make your voyage upon her and give me directly to understand you have prevailed i am no further your enemy she is not worth our debate if she remain unseduced you not making it appear otherwise for your ill opinion and the assault you have made to her chastity you shall answer me with your sword your hand a covenant we will have these things set down by lawful counsel and straight away for britain lest the bargain should catch cold and starve i will fetch my gold and have our two wages recorded agreed exeunt posthumus and iachimo will this hold think you Signor Yakimo will not from it. Pray, let us follow him. Exeunt. Scene five. Britain, a room in Cymbeline's palace. Enter Queen, ladies, and Cornelius. Whilst he had the dews on ground, gather those flowers. Make haste. Who has the note of them? I, madam. Dispatch. Exeunt, ladies now master doctor have you brought those drugs please as your highness i here they are madam presenting a small box but i beseech your grace without offence my conscience bids me ask wherefore you have commanded of me these most poisonous compounds which are the movers of a languishing death but though slow deadly i wonder doctor thou askest me such a question have i not been thy pupil long hast thou not learnt me how to make perfumes distill preserve yea so that our great king himself doth woo me oft for my confections having thus far proceeded unless thou thinkst me devilish is not meet that i did amplify my judgment in other conclusions i will try the forces of these thy compounds on such creatures as we count not worth the hanging but none human to try the vigour of them and apply a layman's to their act and by them gather their several virtues and effects your highness shall from this practice but make hard your heart besides the seeing these effects would be both noisome and infectious oh content thee enter pisanio 
here comes a flattering rascal upon him will i first work he is for his master and enemy to my son how now pisanio doctor your service for this time is ended take your own way cornelius aside i do suspect you madam but you shall do no harm queen to pisanio hark thee a word i do not like her she doth think she has strange lingering poisons <laughs> i do know her spirit and will not trust one of her malice with a drug of such damned nature those she has will stupefy and dull the sense awhile which first perchance she approve on cats and dogs then afterward up higher but there is no danger in what show of death it makes more than the locking up the spirits of time to be more fresh reviving she is fooled with a most false effect and i the truer so to be false with her no further service doctor until i sent for thee i humbly take my leave exit weeps she still says thou dost thou think in time she will not quench and let instructions enter where folly now possesses do thy work when thou shalt bring me word she loves my son i'll tell thee on the instant thou art then as great as thy master greater for his fortunes all lie speechless and his name is at last gasp return he cannot nor continue where he is to shift his being is to exchange one misery with another and every day that comes comes to decay a day's work in him what shalt thou expect to be depender on a thing that leans who cannot be new built nor has no friends so much as but to prop him the queen drops the box pisanio takes it up thou takest up thou knowst not what but take it for thy labour it is a thing i made which hath the king five times redeemed from death i do not know what is more cordial nay i prithee take it it is an earnest of a father good that i mean to thee tell thy mistress how the case stands with her do it as from thyself think what a chance thou changest on but think thou hast thy mistress still to boot my son who shall take notice of thee i'll move the king to any shape of thy preferment such as thou wilt desire and then myself i chiefly that set thee on to this desert am bound to load thy merit richly call my women think on my words exit pisanio <sighs> a sly and constant knave not to be shaked the agent for his master and the remembrancer of her to hold the hand fast to her lord <laughs> i have given him that which if he take shall quite unpeople her of lieges for her sweet and which she after except she bent her humour shall be assured to taste of too <laughs> re-enter pisanio and ladies so so well done well done the violets cowslips and the primroses spare to my closet fare thee well pisanio think on my words exeunt queen and ladies and shall do but when to my good lord i prove untrue i'll choke myself that's all i'll do for you exit scene six the same another room in the palace enter imogen a father cruel and a stepdame false a foolish suitor to a wedded lady that hath her husband banished oh that husband my supreme crown of grief and those repeated vexations of it had i been thief stolen as my two brothers happy but most miserable is the desire that's glorious 
blessed be those how mean soever that have their honest wills which seasons comfort who may this be fie enter pisanio and iacimo madam a noble gentleman of rome comes from my lord with letters change you madam the worthy leonatus is in safety and greets your highness dearly presents a letter thanks good sir you're kindly welcome iacimo aside all of her that is out of door most rich if she be furnished with a mind so rare she is alone the arabian bird and i have lost the wager boldness be my friend arm ah, me audacity from head to foot or like the parthian i shall flying fight rather directly fly imogen reads he is one of the noblest note to whose kindnesses i am most infinitely tied reflect upon him accordingly as you value your trust leonatus so far i read aloud but even the very middle of my heart is warmed by the rest and takes it thankfully you are as welcome worthy sir as i have words to bid you and shall find it so in all that i can do thanks fairest lady what are men mad hath nature given them eyes to see this vaulted arch and the rich crop of sea and land which can distinguish twixt the fiery orbs above and the twin stones upon the numbered beach and can we not partition make with spectacles so precious twixt fair and foul what makes your admiration it cannot be in the eye for apes and monkeys twixt two such she's would chatter this way and contemn with mouths the other nor in the judgment for idiots in this case of favour would be wisely definite nor in the appetite sluttery to such neat excellence opposed should make desire vomit emptiness not so allured to feed what is the matter tro the cloyed will that satiate yet unsatisfied desire that tub both filled and running ravening first the lamb longs after for the garbage what dear sir does reps you are you well uh, thanks madam well to pisanio beseech you sir desire my man's abode where i did leave him he is strange and peevish i was going sir to give him welcome exit continues well my lord his health beseech you well madam is he disposed to mirth i hope he is exceeding pleasant none a stranger there so merry and so gamesome he is called uh, the breton reveller when he was here he did incline to sadness and oft times not knowing why i never saw him sad there is a frenchman his companion one an eminent monsieur that it seems much loves a galleon girl at home he furnaces the thick sighs from him whilst the jolly briton your lord i mean laughs from his free lungs cries oh can my sides hold to think that man who knows by history report or his own proof what woman is yea what she cannot choose but must be will his free hours languish for assured bondage will my lord say so ay madam with his eyes in flood with laughter it is a recreation to be by and hear him mock the frenchman but heavens no some men are much to blame not he i hope not he but yet heaven's bounty towards him might be used more thankfully in himself tis much in you which i account his beyond all talent whilst i am bound to wonder i am bound to pity too what do you pity sir two creatures heartily am i one sir you look on me what wreck discern you in me deserves your pity lamentable what 
to hide me from the radiant sun and solace of the dungeon by a snuff i pray you sir deliver with more openness your answers to my demands why do you pity me that others do i was about to say enjoy your but it is an office of the gods to venture not mine to speak on it you do seem to know something of me or what concerns me pray you since doubting things go ill often hurts more than to be sure they do for certainties either are past remedies or timely knowing the remedy then born discover to me what both you spur and stop had i this cheek to bathe my lips upon this hand whose touch whose every touch would force the feeler's soul to the oath of loyalty this object which takes prisoner the wild motion of mine eye fixing it only here should i damned then slaver with lips as common as the stairs that mount the capital join gripes with hands made hard with hourly falsehood falsehood as with labour then by peeping in an eye base and unlustrous as the smoky light that sped with stinking tallow it were fit that all the plagues of hell should at one time encounter such revolt my lord i fear has forgot britain and himself not i inclined to this intelligence pronounce the beggary of his change but tis your graces that from my mutest conscience to my tongue charms this report out oh, let me hear no more o oh, dearest soul your cause doth strike my heart with pity that doth make me sick a lady so fair and fastened to an empery would make the greatest king double to be partnered with tomboys hired with that self-exhibition which your own coffers yield be revenged or she that bore you was no queen and you recoil from your great stock revenged how should i be revenged if this be true as i have such a heart that both mine ears must not in haste abuse if it be true how should i be revenged i dedicate myself to your sweet pleasure more noble than that renegade to your bed and will continue fast to your affection still close as sure what ho pisanio let me my service tender on your lips away i do condemn mine ears that have so long attended thee if thou wert honourable thou wouldst have told this tale for virtue not for such an end thou seekst as base as strange thou wrongs the gentleman who is as far from thy report as thou from honour and solicitest here a lady that disdains thee and the devil alike what ho pisanio the king my father shall be made acquainted of thy assault if he shall think it fit a saucy stranger in his court to expound his beastly mind to us he hath a court he little cares for and a daughter who he not respects at all what ho pisanio oh happy leonatus i may say the credit that thy lady hath of thee deserves thy trust and thy most perfect goodness her assured credit blessed live you long a lady to the worthiest sir that ever country called his and you his mistress only for the most worthiest fit give me your pardon i have spoke this to know if your affiance were deeply rooted and shall make your lord that which he is new o'er and he is one the truest mannered such a holy witch that he enchants societies into him half all men's hearts are his you make amends he sits amongst men like a descended god he hath a kind of honour sets him up more than a mortal seeming be not angry most mighty princess that i have adventured to try your taking of a false report which hath honoured with confirmation your great judgment in the election of a sir so rare which you know cannot err the love i bear him made me to fan you thus but the gods made you unlike all others chapless pray your pardon all swell sir take my power in the court for yours my humble thanks i had almost forgot to entreat your grace but in a small request 
and yet of moment too, for it concerns your lord. Myself and other noble friends are partners in the business. Pray, what is it? Some dozen Romans of us and your lord, the best feather of our wing, have mingled sums to buy a present for the emperor, which I, the factor for the rest, have done in France. Tis plate of rare device, and jewels of rich and exquisite form, their value is great and I am something curious being strange, to have them in safe storage. May it please you to take them in protection. Willingly, and pawn mine honour for their safety. Since my lord has interest in them, I will keep them in my bedchamber. They are in a trunk, attended by my men. I will make bold to send them to you only for this night. I must aboard to-morrow. Oh, no, no. Yes. I beseech, or I shall short my word by lengthening my return. From Gallia I cross the seas on purpose and on promise to see your grace. I thank you for your pains, but not away to-morrow. Oh, I must, madam. Therefore I shall beseech you, if you please, to greet your lord with writing. Do it to-night. I have outstood my time, which is material to the tender of our present. I will write. Send your trunk to me. It shall safe be kept and truly yielded you. You're very welcome. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, Britain, before Cymbeline's palace. Enter Clotten and two lords. Was there ever man had such luck? When I kissed the jack upon an upcast to be hit away, I had a hundred pound on it, and then a whore sang Jack Nate must take me up for swearing as if i borrowed my oath of him i might not spend them at my pleasure what got he by that you have broke his pate with your bowl if his wit had been like him that broke it it would have run all out when a gentleman is disposed to swear it is not for any standers by to curtail his oaths, ah! No, my lord, nor crop the ears of them. Awesome dog, I give him satisfaction. Would he have been one of my rank? To have smelt like a fool. I am not vexed more than anything in the earth, a pox on it. I'd rather not be so noble as I am. They dare not fight with me because of the queen my mother every jack slave hath his belly full of fighting and i must go up and down like a cock that nobody can match you are a cock and a capon too and you crow cock with your comb on sayest thou it is not fit your lordship should undertake every companion that you give offence to nah i know that but it is fit I should commit offence to my inferiors. Aye, it is fit for your lordship only. Why, so I say. Did you hear of the stranger that comes to court tonight? A stranger? And I not know of it. He's a strange fellow himself, and knows it not. Oh, there's an Italian come, and... "'Tis thought one of Leonatus's friends. "'Leonatus! Yuck. "'A banished rascal, and he's another, "'whatsoever he be. "'Who told you of this stranger?' "'One of your lordship's pages.' "'Is it fit I went to look upon him? "'Is there no derogation in it?' "'You cannot derogate, my lord.' No, easily, I think. 
mm, you are a fool granted therefore your issues being foolish do not derogate come i'll go see this italian what i have lost today at bowls i went to-night of him come go i'll attend your lordship exeunt clotten and first lord that such a crafty devil as his mother should yield the world this ass a woman that bears all down with her brain and this her son cannot take two from twenty for his heart and leave eighteen alas poor princess thou divine imogen what thou endurest betwixt a father by thy stepdame governed a mother hourly coining plots a wooer more hateful than the foul expulsion is of thy dear husband than that horrid act of the divorce he'll make the heavens hold firm the walls of thy dear honour keep unshaken that temple thy fair mind that thou may stand to enjoy thy banished lord and this great land exit scene two imogen's bedchamber in cymbeline's palace a trunk in one corner of it imogen in bed reading a lady attending who's there my woman helen please you madam what hour is it almost midnight madam i have read three hours then mine eyes are weak fold down the leaf where i have left to bed take not away the taper leave it burning and if thou canst awake by four of the clock i prithee call me sleep has seized me wholly exit lady to your protection i commend me gods from fairies and the tempters of the night guard me beseech you sleeps yakimo comes from the trunk the crickets sing and man's or laboured sense repairs itself by rest ah tarquim thus did softly press the rushes ere he wakened the chastity he wounded cytherea how bravely thou becomest thy bed fresh lily and whiter than the sheets that i might touch but kiss one kiss rubies unparagoned how dearly they do it tis her breathing that perfumes the chamber thus the flame of the taper bows toward her and would underpeep her lids to see the enclosed lights now canopied under these windows white and azure laced with blue of heaven's own tint but my design to note the chamber i will write all down such and such pictures there the window such the adornment of her bed the arras figures why such and such and the contents of the story ah but some natural notes about her body above ten thousand meaner movables would testify to enrich mine inventory o oh, sleep thou ape of death lie dull upon her and be her sense but as a monument thus in a chapel lying come off come off taking off her bracelet as slippery as the gordian knot was hard tis mine and this will witness outwardly as strongly as the conscience does within to the madding of her lord on her left breast a mole sank spotted like the crimson drops near the bottom of a cowslip here's a virtue stronger than ever law could make this secret will force him think i have picked the lock and tamed the treasure of her honour no more to what end why should i write this down that's riveted screwed to my memory she hath been reading like the tale of Tarius. here the leaps turned down where philomel gave up i have enough to the trunk again and shut the spring of it swift swift you dragons of the night that dawning may bear the raven's eye i lodge in fear though this a heavenly angel hell is here clock strikes one two three time time goes into the trunk the scene closes 
scene three an antechamber adjoining imogen's apartments enter clotten and lords your lordship is the most patient man in loss the most coldest that ever turned up ace it would make any man cold to lose but not every man patient after the noble temper of your lordship you are most hot and furious when you win winning will put any man into courage if i could get this foolish imogen i should have gold enough it's almost morning is it not day my lord Oh, would this music would come i am advised to give her music a mornings they say it will penetrate enter musicians come on tune if you can penetrate her with your fingering so we'll try with tongue too if none will do let her remain but i'll never give up then a very excellent good conceited thing after a wonderful sweet air with admirable rich words to it <laughs> and then let her consider hark hark the lark at heaven's gate sings and phoebus skins arise his steeds to water red to springs on chaliced flowers that lies and winking merry buds begin to hold their golden eyes with everything that pretty is my lady sweet arise 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 so get your gum if this penetrate i will consider your music the better if it do not it is a voice in her ears which horse has and calves guts nor the voice of eunuch to boot can never amend exeunt musicians here comes the king i am glad i was up so late for that's the reason i was up so early i cannot choose but take this service i have done fatherly enter cymbeline and queen good morrow to your majesty and to my gracious mother attend you here the door of our stern daughter will she not forth i have assailed her with music but she vouchsafes no notice the exile of her minion is too new she hath not yet forgot him some more time must wear the print of his remembrance out and then she's yours you are most bound to the king who lets go by no vantages that may prefer you to his daughter frame yourself to orderly soliciting and befriend it with aptness of the season make denials increase your services so seem as if you were inspired to do those duties which you tender to her that you in all obey her save when command to your dismission tends and therein you are senseless thanks and so not so enter a messenger so like you sir ambassadors from rome the one is caius lucius a worthy fellow albeit to come on angry purpose now but that's no fault of his we must receive him according to the honour of his sender and towards himself his goodness was spent on us we must extend our notice our dear son when you have given good morning to your mistress attend the queen and us we shall have need to employ you towards this roman come our queen exeunt all but clotten if she be up i'll speak with her 
If not, well, let her lie still and dream. Boy, you leave! Oh! <laughs> I know what women are about her. Uh, what if I do lie in one of their hands? Tis gold which buys admittance oft it doth yea, and makes Diana's rangers false themselves yield up their dear to the stand of the stealer, and tis gold which makes the true man killed and saves the thief, nay, sometime hangs both thief and true man. What can it not do and undo? I will make one of her women lawyer to me, for I yet not understand the case myself. By your leave. Enter a lady. Who's there that knocks? A gentleman. No more. Yes, and a gentlewoman's son. Well, that's more than some whose tailors are as dear as yours can justly boast of. And what's your lordship's pleasure? Your lady's person. Is she ready? Aye, to keep a chamber. There is gold for you. Sell me your good report. How? My good name? Or to report of you what I shall think is good. Uh, the princess. Enter Imogen. Good morrow, fairest sister, your sweet hand. Exit, lady. Good morrow, sir. You lay out too much pains for purchasing but trouble. The thanks I give is telling you that I am poor of thanks and scarce can spare them. Still, I swear I love you. If you but said so, twere as deep with me. If you swear still, your recompense is still that I regard it not. This is no answer. But that you shall not say I yield being silent, I would not speak. I pray you, spare me. Faith, I shall unfold equal discourtesy to your best kindness. One of your great knowing should learn, being taught, forbearance. To leave you in your madness, twirl my sin, I will not. <laughs> Fools cure not mad folks. Do you call me? as i am mad i do if you'll be patient i'll no more be mad that cures us both i am much sorry sir you put me to forget a lady's manners by being so verbal and learn now for all that i which know my heart do here pronounce by the very truth of it i care not for you and i am so near the lack of charity to accuse myself i hate you which i had rather you felt than make it my boast you sin against obedience which you owe your father for the contract you pretend with that base wretch one bread of arms and fostered with cold dishes with scraps of the court it is no contract none though it be allowed in meaner parties yea who than he <laughs> more mean to knit their souls on whom there is no more dependency but brats and beggary in self-figured not yet you are curbed from that enlargement by the consequence of the cram and must not soil the precious note of it with a base slave a hilding for a livery a squire's cloth a pantler <laughs> not so eminent profane fellow wert thou the son of jupiter and no more but what thou art besides thou wert too base to be his groom thou wert dignified enough even to the point of envy if it were made comparative for your virtues to be styled the under hangman of his kingdom and hated for being preferred so well the thought bog rot him he never can meet more mischance than come to be but named of thee his meanest garment that ever hath but clipped his body is dearer in my respect than all the hairs above thee were they all made such men how now pisanio enter pisanio his garment <laughs> now the devil 
to dorothy my woman heidi presently he's gone i am sprited with a fool frighted and angered worse go bid my woman search for a jewel that too casually hath left mine arm it was thy master's shrew me if i would lose it for a revenue of any kings in europe i do think i saw it this morning confident i am last night was on mine arm i kissed it oh, i hope it be not gone to tell my lord that i kiss aught but he twill not be lost i hope so go and search exit pisanio you have abused me his meanest garment i i said so sir if you will make it an action call witness to it i will inform your father your mother too she's my good lady and will conceive i hope but the worst of me so i leave you sir to the worst of discontent exit i'll be revenged Exit. Scene four. Rome. Philario's house. Enter Posthumus and Philario. Fear it not, sir. I would I were so sure to win the king as I am bold. Her honour will remain hers. What means do you make to him? Not any, but abide the change of time. Quake in the present winter's state, and wish that warmer days would come. In these feared hopes, I barely gratify your love. They failing, I must die much your debtor. Your very goodness and your company o'er pays all I can do. By this, your king hath heard of great Augustus. Caius Lucius will do's commission throughly, and I think he'll grant the tribute, send the arrearages, or look upon our Romans, whose remembrance is yet fresh in their grief. I do believe, statist though I am none, nor like to be, that this will prove a war, and you shall hear the legions now in Gallia sooner landed in our not-fearing Britain than have tidings of any penny tribute paid. Our countrymen are men more ordered than when Julius Caesar smiled at their lack of skill, but found their courage worthy his frowning at. Their discipline, now mingled with their courage, will make known to their approvers they are people such that mend upon the world enter yakimo see yakimo the swiftest hearts have posted you by land and winds of all the corners kissed your sails to make your vessel nimble welcome sir i hope the briefness of your answer made the speediness of your return your lady is one of the fairest that i have looked upon and therewithal the best or let her beauty look through a casement to allure false hearts and be false with them. Here are letters for you. They are ten are good, I trust. Tis very like. Was Caius Lucius in the Briton court when you were there? He was expected then, but not approached. All is well yet. Sparkles the stone as it was wont. Or is not too dull for your good wearing? If I had lost it, I should have lost the worth of it in gold. I'll make a journey twice as far to enjoy a second night of such sweet shortness which was mine in Britain, for the ring is won. The stone's too hard to come by. Not a whit, your lady, being so easy. Make not, sir, you're lost your sport. I hope you know that we must not continue friends. Good, sir we must if you keep covenant had i not brought the knowledge of your mistress home i grant we were to question further but i now profess myself the winner of her honour together with your ring and not the wronger of her or you having proceeded but by both your will if you can make apparent my hand and ring is yours if not the foul opinion you had of her pure honour gains or loses your sword or mine, or masterless leaves both to who shall find them. Sir, 
my circumstances being so near the truth as i will make them must first induce you to believe whose strength i will confirm with oath which i doubt not you'll give me leave to spare when you shall find you need it not proceed first her bedchamber where i confess i slept not but profess how that was well worth watching it was hanged with tapestry of silk and silver the story proud cleopatra when she met her roman and sidna swelled above the banks or for the press of boats or pride a piece of work so bravely done so rich that it did strive in workmanship and value which i wondered could be so rarely and exactly wrought since the true life on it was this is true and this you might have heard of here by me or by some other more particulars must justify my knowledge so they must or do your honour injury the chimney is south the chamber and the chimney-piece chaste diane bathing never saw i figures so likely to report themselves the cutter was as another nature dumb out to one turf motion and breath left out this is a thing which you might from relation likewise reap being as it is much spoke of the roof of a chamber with golden cherubims is fretted her and irons i had forgot them were two winking cupids of silver each on one foot standing nicely depending on their brands this is her honour let it be granted you have seen all this and praise be given to your remembrance the description of what is in her chamber nothing saves the wager you have laid then if you can showing the bracelet be pale i beg you leave to air this jewel see and now tis up again it must be married to that your diamond i'll keep them jove once more let me behold it is it that which i left with her sir i thank her that she stripped it from her arm i see her yet her pretty action did outsell her gift and yet enriched it too she gave it to me and said she prized it once maybe she plucked it off to send it me she writes so to you doth she oh no 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 tis true here take this too gives the ring it is a basilisk on to mine eye kills me to look on t let there be no honour where there is beauty truth where semblance love where there is another man the vows of women of no more bondage be to where they are made than they are to their virtues which is nothing oh above measure false have patience sir and take your ring again tis not yet won it may be probable she lost it or who knows if one of her women being corrupted hath stolen it from her very true and so i hope he came by it back my ring render to me some corporal sign about her more evident than this for this was stolen by jupiter i had it from her arm hark you he swears by jupiter he swears tis true nay keep the ring tis true i am sure she would not lose it her attendants are all sworn and honourable they induced to steal it and by a stranger no he hath enjoyed her there take thy hire and all the fiends of hell divide themselves between you sir be patient this is not strong enough to be believed of one persuaded well of never talk on't if you seek for further satisfying under her breast worthy the pressing lies a mole right proud of that most delicate lodging by my life i kissed it and it gave me present hunger to feed again though full you do remember this stain upon her ay and it doth confirm another stain as big as hell can hold were there no more but it will you hear more spare your arithmetic never count the turns once and a million i'll be sworn no swearing 
if you will swear you have not done to you lie oh that i had her here to tear her limb meal i will go there and do it in the court before her father i'll do something exit quite besides the government of patience you have won let's follow him and pervert the present wrath he has against himself with all my heart exeunt scene five another room in philario's house enter posthumus could i find out the woman's part in me for there's no motion that tends to vice a man but i affirm it is the woman's part be it lying note it the woman's flattering hers deceiving hers lust and rank thoughts hers hers revenges hers ambitions covetings change of prides disdain nice longing slanders mutability all faults that may be named nay that hell knows why hers and part or all but rather all for even to vice they are not constant but are changing still one vice but of a minute old for one not half so old as that i'll write against them detest them curse them yet tis greater skill than a true hate to pray they have their will the very devils cannot plague them better exit End of Act 2